20 minutes at a time. Fear, danger, risk. With little preparation, I'd guess we can handle 20 minutes of almost anything. Story time. Okay, I'm 19, and there's this train bridge. Parts of me did some serious growing up on this bridge. Um, and I got really acquainted with the mechanics, the evolution, the biology of fear, whether it's fictional or physical or existential, the works. My train bridge crosses the Richelieu River. So it's between Audubon Park, where I grew up, and Belleuil, where I catch the bus to go to college in Montreal. 45 minute regional bus to Longueuil Metro, and then two metro lines, and then a city bus. It's like four hours a day on public transit. And the official bus stop near my house is actually miles down the road in the next town. And it would be an extra 25 minute bike ride or like an hour and a half walk in the winter time. And I don't have taxi money, and my father sure isn't changing his commute schedule to give me a lift. But a short walk from my house down to the river's edge gets me to the train bridge. And I could just take 20 minutes, walk across that train bridge, get to the bus stop in Belay, save myself more than an hour a day. Now, it's clearly marked that it's clearly illegal <laughs> to cross the train bridge on foot, and the CP rail cops will clearly ticket you if they catch you. But like lots of us kids did it. I, I've never dared until now. Um, and 19-year-old Paul is pretty proud of himself for his elegant solution to this endless commute. So, classic train bridge. You got two uh, uh, pairs of steel rails on the big wooden railroad ties, and then there's this steel substructure, and then like another 20-foot drop to the water below. It's fairly safe. <laughs> I mean, like if a train comes, you just stay in the lane where there's no train. Um, unless, like, two trains come at the same time, like, both in each direction, but that, like, almost never happens. <laughs> like, so far. But, hey, I'm 19 and invincible, because I'm 19, so I turn my back on danger and fear and blithely cross this bridge twice a day, every day. And I'm gonna tell you about three of these crossings. So, crossing number one. Um, I'm coming back from college in the evening, and I've been reading Salem's Lot by Stephen King. <laughs> a classic tale of a bunch of vampires slowly like taking over slash infecting slash devouring this small New England town, house by darkened house. And I'll just state for the record that I actually am not a fan of horror movies and books because I get way too scared. Like, train bridge scared is fine, but these horror stories give me, like, huge nightmares. <laughs> but I had a, a girlfriend in college who was a huge horror fan, so she lent me a whole bunch of Stephen King books, and I had a little phase. And, you know, like, 45 minutes on a bus, twice a day, it's nice to have a big, thick book. So I get off the bus, still super spooked by Salem's Lot, and I got my Walkman earphones in, and I'm walking, get to the bridge, I get to the bridge, and I have a personal rule. I never wear my headphones while I'm crossing the bridge, right? Like I would probably feel the vibrations and like see the headlight, but like, nope, not taking a chance. Take the headphones off. It's bitterly cold winter day, night. It's like 6 p.m., but it's already dark. And like there's these, I'm on the bridge and there's these weird like cracking and snapping sounds like from the ice flows shifting and the few sections of river that aren't frozen over, have this weird mist, like, just creeping over the surface of the water, and I am super spooked. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Stephen King. <laughs> Get to the other side, climb down the embankment, start walking home through the town, and the whole town is dark. Like, there's no lights on in any houses, and the street lights are off, and there's no cars moving, even the gas station is dark. Weird. 
So I put my headphones back on, and there's no radio stations. Like, none of them. Okay, now I'm getting really freaked out. I'm like, it's some sort of radio and electricity jamming energy field blanketing my town? Like, are, are, are the Russians or the aliens about to invade? Or maybe it's those damn vampires. <laughs> All right, I changed my mind. Real life, way scarier than the stories. So I find out that it's actually a province-wide blackout caused by excessive sunspot activity. But the grid went down at the exact moment that I was on the bridge. We're all fine. Crossing number two. Coming back from college, get to the bridge on the village side to cross back home, and I see a bunch of CP rail cops on the bridge. <laughs> Perfect. It's like an hour-long walk to the car bridge and then another hour-long walk back to Otterburn Park. This is... I'm gazing at the bridge and I realize, you know, if I climb up from under the bridge along the embankment, <laughs> I can reach the bottom girders and, like, those are, like, solid steel, almost a foot wide. You could walk along those. I mean, there's, like, this support girders coming up, like straight up and diagonally every 10 feet or so, but it's, it's doable. <laughs> I mean, it's clearly way more dangerous than walking across the top. But I'm still 19 and I'm still invincible, so <laughs> I'd go for it right away. You're walking along and, and every 10 feet or so I have to kind of cling on to the girder in front of me and then kind of swing my body around, get a, a foothold on the next horizontal section. It's not that difficult, but it's not that easy. And this place is super gross. There's like bird shit encrusting everything. <laughs> and like ancient cobwebs galore. And like nothing below my feet but a 20 foot drop to the churning current below. I look up every now and then, and sometimes I see the boots of a CP rail cop right over my head. <laughs> I am such a badass. <laughs> I make it across, no problem. <laughs> what do you know? This bridge isn't just a time saver, it's a vehicle of personal growth. <laughs> Facing my fears, improvising in the face of adversity, yay Paul! Crossing number three. This morning, I'm walking down from my house, get to the bridge, and when I arrive, I see that this time there are actual cops swarming all over the bridge. Damn it. There's no way I can make this crossing now. And when I get a bit closer, I see that there's something hanging down from underneath the bridge, about halfway across the span and it's slowly spinning in one direction, and then the other. It's a body on a rope. A young man has died by suicide. I find out later he was basically my age. You know, when we think about a person choosing suicide, if we do, Maybe we think about the moment of it, and maybe we think about whatever the reasons might have been for it, or, or the aftermath for their loved ones. But do we ever think about the final minutes leading up to that fateful moment? I have no idea what this young man was thinking. But having crossed that bridge, both above and below, I know for a fact what his final 20 minutes were like. I walked the same girders. I gripped the same pigeon shit stained rivets with fingers stiffened by the cold. I'll never know what was going through his mind, if there was something, anything that could have made for a different outcome. I think of him 
waking up very early, and still dark, all alone, hopeless, despairing, but somehow resolute, and then carefully climbing all along the bottom of that bridge to the halfway mark, carrying a length of rope, and then I keep crossing that bridge twice a day, every day. And I often think of him, I think of his physical experience, like what he went through in last, those last few minutes. So recently, I started a new job in the mental health field, taking calls on a suicide hotline. And we learned in training that the ideal duration of a successful call from voicing empathy to gathering information to de-escalation to developing a safety plan is 20 minutes. When I was 19 and invincible, my safety plan was super simple. Personal rule, no headphones, three points of contact on the bridge. Just keep going, just don't die. And now I'm older and I'm definitely not invincible. And just keep going looks and feels a lot different now. I've had all kinds of dark moments, many more than I would have liked. And I don't cross that bridge anymore. I haven't crossed it for years. But there have been other metaphorical bridges that have deepened my understanding of the biology of fear and despair. Now I hold fast to the truth that no matter how bad things get, they can't stay bad forever. I can choose to take it 20 minutes at a time to survive it 20 minutes at a time. Thank you for listening.